you know, he's not going to have any roaches. If he had roaches, I would get a much more sort of stalker heavy army. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much just going to A move into the Zerg base here, and he's going to lose because he went for this greedy little thing here where he just basically uh, like tries to expand in a place that he shouldn't. You know, if he is expanded here, like this game would be different. Um, he would have his hatchery over here. He would have a line of like instead of having all these drones, like he he could have like five of them in a line over here, and you can pretty much see with like zerglings and this many zerglings and five sunkens. I'm pretty much never gonna break that, and uh, four warp gate pretty much just fails versus that build. Um, so in Predos's position, uh, what I'd usually do is I go three gate instead of four gate, and then I'd open an expansion maybe get like a hallucinated phoenix into his base, do some scouting, etc, and you get into a longer game. Um, you, are, you are at a disadvantage. What you want to try and do is usually try and force Zerg to make some ridiculous number of sunkens so that you've kind of crippled his economy slightly so that you can catch up from the fact that your expansion is like massively late. Uh, you don't want to play passive and let the Zerg just macro up because that's basically saying I lose. Um, Zerg macro is really, really, really strong. Um, spawn larvae is absolutely ridiculous if you don't pressure the Zerg. So you have to pressure the Zerg, and that's the only way you can keep the matchup balanced. Like, if you if you decide to say, like, play a macro game where, oh, I'm just going to go on two bases, and you're going to go on two bases, and we'll just macro up and then have a big army and fight, you're going to lose as Protoss, because Zerg can do this thing where they power drones, and then they power units, where you can't really do that with Protoss, you're sort of powering drones all the time. So, um, you know, keep the pressure on Zerg, force him to make units so that he can't drone up. Um, by the way, if this was rich minerals, like if these were rich minerals, I would attack this base first, um, just so that I hurt his economy more. Uh, but you know, it doesn't really matter, it depends game to game and you know how experienced you are at the game, you sort of make better decisions. So I'm pretty much just going to push into his base here. And uh, win the game. You know, he is doing the usual Zerg thing and spawning like bunches of Zerglings, which are like, as you can see, they're really, really good against Stalkers. So, you know, if, if a Zerg goes like mass Zergling, don't get Stalkers or you're gonna lose the game. I see loads of um, Prodosses, what they do is they try and do this thing where they go Zealot Stalker Sentry, you know, pretty standard, but they don't realize that they're up against an all-ling army. Um, if I didn't get this many zealots, I would lose the game. Like, if, imagine if I had three less zealots and they were all stalkers instead, um, I would I would lose the game pretty much. Like, he'd just pump like a ridiculous number of zerglings and just run me over. And so Zerg is pretty much just in a desperation here. Uh, as soon as he pulls his probes off the line, I pretty much know I've won the game. Um, and, you know, just snipe a spawning pool, make sure you can't get any additional Zerglings. You know, Zerg will try and do this usual cheesy thing where they send like seven Zerglings into your base and just kill all your probes. Don't let that happen. Um, you know, keep some... keep reinforcements coming from your base unless you, like, have a proxy pylon. Um, and even then, like, I might leave, like, one Zealot and one Sentry just to stop him from doing that thing where he just sends a million zerglings to your base, or like, not okay, not a million, but you know, he sends zerglings to your base, kills your probes. If you think about it, like, most of my original army is gone. Like, most of my army is actually reinforcements. Uh, you saw those four zealots came in, you saw like all this is coming in. Without probes, I couldn't be making all of that. Like, this is a really sort of low econ build. Like, it's not like I got loads of spare minerals and gas to spend. So if if you let Zerg backstab you, um, you're actually going to lose the game because he's going to backstab you with speedlings. He's going to kill, like, destroy your economy, and then he's just going to barely fight you off. And you know you're going to pretty much just sort of trade units. But what's going to happen is you're not going to have have an economy, and he's going to be constantly pumping reinforcements from his drones. So that means you're going to lose the game. Don't let that happen. Oh, that's a tip to Zergs as well. If you ever find like some four warp gate build and it's coming towards your base and you're like, oh shit, oh shit, send Zerglings to their base and hope that they haven't like if it let's say you've screwed up, yeah, and you're like sunken's are way too late or something, 
and he's just pumping Zerglings like crazy, send a few to his base and see if you can cripple his economy. If you cripple his economy, you're going to win the game, because he's not going to be able to reinforce his units, and um, you can just keep reinforcing with Zerglings. And Zerglings are really, really cost-effective against um, a badly chosen unit composition by Protoss, which loads of Protosses do, they get Stalkers versus Zerglings, which just doesn't work. Um, you need Zealot Sentry. You need Zealot Sentry. Like, Zealots are the only cost-efficient unit that you can get versus Zerg Zerglings in the, this early in the game. And um, a few more things, like, little things really help. Like, if you think about it, why, why did I win this game? Is it because I did some all-in build? Well, yeah, but let's. why did I really win the game? When did it start? It all started because I saw his overlord in my base, and that's like a really small thing. You wouldn't think that makes much of a difference, but, you know, he sent his overlord. I get to see it. So I went here, and I intercepted his drone at just the right time. Such a small little thing. And then I put a pylon, and then he puts his hatchery over here. And then his zergling pool is late, uh, his spawning pool is late. And then this lets me do a full warp gate build, knowing that I can just crush him. And if you think about it, just this one little thing, you know, it all started from his overlord coming to my base. And then, you know, I did this, like, mini little harass here. And just those small little things is what let me win the game. So don't think that, oh, you know, s you know small things, I'm not going to worry about that. No, they really are extremely important. Um, just tiny little things will win you the game. And, you know, even if they don't, they build up. You know, it all adds up. This is what pro gamers use to win games. It's just tiny, small little things. They're never going to give up an advantage. You know, why give up an advantage when you can just take it right in front of you? So, um, I hope you enjoyed this game. This is basically how to counter any sort of rich mineral expansion. Um, what Zerg could have done is, if he decides to expand over here, uh, firstly, don't. I would suggest going a Roach Warren and then expanding. And then, you know... Just because you go Roach Warren doesn't mean, oh no, I've done some one base Zerg build. No, you haven't. You've gone Roach Warren. It's a perfectly no like one base Zerg is a perfectly normal build. It hard counters ten gate. Um, you know, it's it's strong. You can open it into an expansion really, really easily. Like once your Roach has come out. Um, in his position, in Nixie's position here, I wouldn't have been so greedy with these drones. Like if he gets more Zerglings, then he might have been able to fend this off. If he instead, like, sacrifice three drones, get a roach warren, and then use the extra minerals to get, uh, roaches, then he would have been able to fight this off as well. You know, like, as a zerg, uh, a lot of zergs just get way too greedy, they don't realize, actually, you can just not get any drones at your expansion until you fought off Protoss's one base all-in. Um, and... Like, Protoss' plan is to either hope that you go greedy, or Protoss will go 3-gate, pretend that he's doing a 4-gate push, and make you sacrifice all this stuff, and make you, like, have no drones at your expansion, and then expand himself, and then, actually, your 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 drone count might be pretty even. Um, so, and, of course, like, Protoss has a nice, like, sort of tech up as well. He's got a cyber core and, like, 4-gate, or 3-warp gates out. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, this is a PVC, it's not really a particular build order video, this is just sort of a nice little game that I had earlier t um, yesterday, uh, it was just a random ladder game. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it educational, please leave comments, um, please subscribe as well, um, that's really nice. Uh, actually please leave comments, um, I really want to hear what everyone says. And also, please support me on the Team Liquid thread. Um, I've got a thread on Team Liquid called BR Tarog and Equilaterals uh, Vods and Commentary. I think it's something like that. Please post in there. Keep get. I want. I, I want to try and get some attention for these videos because me and Equilateral, nobody really knows who we are. And so, um, you know, people as opposed to Gretorf, they're going to be like, "Oh, wow, Gretorf's doing a video. Let's go watch." You know, I think we have a lot of information to give to new players out there and experienced players as well. So, you know, please comment, rate, subscribe, etc. on our videos, and please support us in the Team Liquid thread. That would be so much of a help. Please tell us what you want to see next. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Always be very good-mannered, and see you next time.